Hi guys. In this tutorial I'm going to uh, really quickly just show you how I came to model this metallic pendant uh, shape in 3ds Max um, using some procedural techniques as well as uh, standard polygon modeling techniques combined. Um, and it came to this result. So, alright, let's get started. In 3ds Max, the first step is to go to Extended Primitives. And let me just expand my viewport here. Extended Primitives, go to the Hydra Primitive, and we'll keep it in the uh, Tetra family. And we'll just bring it up here in the viewport. And we'll switch the Q parameter to 0 0.7. Alright, so you end up with this shape. Okay, so we'll go ahead and apply an editable poly modifier on top all right and the first thing I like to do in you know whenever I'm modeling in max is just to quickly drop a uh, you know plain gray shade around there and change the wire colors to black just makes it easier to uh, see things in the viewport and I'll change the uh, change to shaded view here all right so now that we have this shape um, next step will be to go ahead into your polygon mode, select one of the, uh, the triangles in the corner here, and select similar to grab them all, delete, control A to grab everything, hold down shift and then click the extrude, and we'll extrude by polygon and we'll just bring it out arbitrarily to right about actually right about here so I'm, I'm doing it at 79 centimeters but uh, I'm not modeling to scale here for this example if you are then of course as always just pay attention to your uh, your your uh, dimensions okay so this looks good right about here all right so then we'll invert that selection delete the interior so now we have just these uh, surfaces okay and what we'll do is we'll switch down to edge mode and we'll begin uh, actually what we need to do here is rotate these uh, rotate these faces so to get the proper uh, angles so we'll control A to select all alright um, we'll go ahead up into our reference coordinate system set it to local alright and then our pivot point we will set that down to uh, the selection centers alright and then we're going to turn on uh, the absolute transform type in mode and um, we're going to type in a rotation on the Z of 35 degrees okay oh, and actually something happened there hold on one second we have to uh, that isn't correct okay so what we got to do is just make sure we're in local and make sure we're in uh, the uh, center selection and try that again all right so 35 degrees and there that's exactly what we're looking for okay um, I guess sometimes when you switch modes or you control Z for any anything, uh, you got to watch that it hasn't changed your uh, reference coordinates back to uh, the original form there. So that's what happened to me just uh, a moment ago. All right, so uh, always pay attention that you are in the uh, the correct reference coordinates when you do that transformation. All right, so that it rotates them. Uh, just on the z-axis all right so now that we have it uh, the these uh, surfaces facing in the angle that we need uh, we can go down to the edges and we're going to start with uh, a bottom edge and we're going to collect connect it to a top edge with the bridge command all right and we're going to rotate around and we're going to start here and we're going to connect it there with a bridge so what we're doing here is we're zigzagging across the surfaces all right and bridging the uh, edges together okay so then we have that one and we're going to bridge it to that one all right and then we're going to rotate around and we're going to grab this one and we're going to bridge it to the 
to the side there. All right, and um, so it's just a zigzag around. All right, and then we're going to go up to the two at the top here. All right, so we'll select those and we'll bridge them. And then the two left at the bottom. And we'll grab those and we'll bridge them. Now, there's an easy way to check that we've done this correctly, and that is to uh, go ahead and, and view one of these one of these faces head on and the bridges that you've made should look like they're rotating or emanating out in the same direction in like a fan type of uh, scenario so in other words these bridges that you made should be fanned uh, in the same direction from emanating from the uh, from the surface so as you can see that's correct and if we go to this one and we select the three bridges they're fanning out in the same direction and so on so that's a that's an easy way to uh, just go around the object and and ensure that you've uh, made the connections properly okay so we have all our bridges uh, on there properly so the next step will be to add a turbo smooth that one iteration all right, so we have that. And what we'll do next is uh, go ahead and add a, uh, a Spherify here. Okay, so we've Spherified that, and then we're going to Turbo Smooth one more time. All right, and that's so that we could uh, get the topology we want to work with here. So now that we have that, we're going to add an Edit Poly. Go down to your Faces mode and start selecting these uh, these central polygons here on one side of the object and just loop select them so that you end up with this shape now if you rotate around you'll see that there's a uh, another uh, loop of polygons that you can select to get them all around the object alright so now you just rotate around and make sure that you have all the polygons selected that uh, make up this internal form here All right and then what we'll do is add a relax modifier make sure your keep boundary points fixed are is turned on and just increase the iterations until it can't uh, it can't uh, relax it any further all right so then you have this shape okay so now from here uh, what we want to do is we'll go ahead and add a shell modifier and we will shell the inner amount and give it some thickness on the inside to right about there okay and again I'm being very arbitrary here but uh, if you were to model this as say a uh, 3d printable uh, object um, or for a character in a scene or, or you know for something specific you'd want to pay attention to your units all right and uh, you know you can eyeball it as far as thickness is concerned um, and and get the the thickness that you'll prefer here for for your uh, resulting object and you can always go back down in the stack once this is complete and adjust any of these parameters for the most part um, you know at the end if you're not happy with the end result but uh, for now I'm happy with this um, so I'll go ahead and add an edit poly on top of that okay and we'll go ahead and select all of these faces all right the uh, the outside border faces of the object all around it and we'll hold down shift and do an inset just a slight inset maybe about that much to give it some sharpness when we go ahead and turbo smooth it again all right so uh, we have that now what we're going to do next is we're going to select all of these outside faces that make up the interior border of each uh, extruded ed, um, extruded arm I guess you can call it of the object okay so all of those and then we'll uh, We'll do an extrusion by local normal. All right, and we'll just bring that out to right about there. Okay, again, I'm just arbitrarily eyeballing it here. This this is a 
you know this isn't a real world object so this is all to your taste and preference okay so we have it to right about there I think it should be fine all right so now we have this object and the next step will be to add a uh, let's see I think I was a yeah it was a a squeeze modifier and we'll reduce the rate we'll give it a radial amount uh, let's see about negative zero five okay you just want to make sure that you're not uh, creating a situation where your edges are overlapping or any kind of bad geometry there okay so we look good here so in my case it was negative zero five to create this effect and then we will add a twist modifier next all right so we'll go down and get the twist going here and I gave it uh, 180 degrees okay and in my case on the z-axis all right so now we have this shape and we'll just add a turbo smooth on here two iterations just to see what we're, what we're working with here so there's our object all right now if you notice in my uh, in my render I, I drilled some holes through it um, so that uh, I had somewhere to put a uh, you know a chain or, or something to hang the object so we can do that easily here um, we'll go down to let's see we'll create an edit poly right underneath the turbo smooth okay and uh, we'll show our edge faces here okay and as you can see we have uh, poles created on, on either side of the object um, also internally on the inside in the interior all right these poles are useful for uh, helping us drill holes through it through the uh, shelled object here so what we'll do is we'll grab this point which is the pole of all of these edges here and then we'll rotate around and we'll find the interior equivalent now don't forget we're twisted here the object is twisted so if we rotate around we gotta find the pole that's on the inside which is right there okay so that's that's our uh, our parallel poles here points all right so we select those and we will hold down shift while we hit chamfer and we'll chamfer it slightly to right about there okay we don't want to chamfer too much where the edges are going to be touching over here okay so we have it on either side all right so we'll control click on polygon and then we'll shrink it once so that uh, our uh, chamfer uh, end guns are selected and then we'll hit our geo poly which made it into a circular uh, end gun okay and then we'll bridge that okay actually we could uh, we could do a little inset here to make it a cleaner hole all right so we'll inset by polygon just slightly and then we'll bridge and then we'll inset one more time this time by group all right and that will create a hole a very nice and clean hole that you can run a uh, a necklace through a chain whatever you want all right so there's our hole through the object that we've drilled and that goes all the way around okay all the way through and we'll do the same thing on the other side all right with the same technique so let's uh, let's go over here and select the vertex that makes up our pole on that side and again on the uh, interior all right and uh, we'll chamfer that and it's remembered our previous settings from the other side so that's a good thing this way they'll be the same size and then control select the polygon 
sub object and shrink it once and you'll have your uh, n-gons and then choose geopoly to make them circular and we'll inset it again all right and then bridge and then inset using the same settings that it's remembered from the other side all right so now if we uh, view end result we have holes on either side that if you ran a spline through there it would line up nicely and you could have um, you know a necklace a pendant for a necklace or uh, or whatever you chose an earring perhaps okay and of course we could have made these holes a little bit bigger if, if we so you know chose I mean we could just remove this edit poly and uh, put another uh, edit poly in there and do them over if we want to um, but uh, for now I'm happy with that as an example all right and, and in my ex my uh, render here I did the same thing on the bottom as I did on the top um, but that's completely optional you know just uh, if you wanted to make holes on the bottom you would just uh, do the same procedure that we did on the top select your uh, vertices that are on the uh, the pole and chamfer and uh, you know inset and then bridge and then inset again and uh, that would be it all right so just a quick tutorial on uh, how I came to make this render, the shape for this render, and I uh, hope, hope you found it useful and fun. Um, it's a pretty cool shape, and uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. All right, and I'll be back again soon with a, uh, another tutorial, and uh, please subscribe if you're enjoying these, and um, I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye.